Hey guys, welcome back to the first proper lesson in my new series, Nameless. So this is a art journal series where I hope you follow along and make a journal with me and then use the journal. And it's all focused on using vintage photos. So I hope you join in. In this lesson, we're gonna be making our journal cover and I've sped this up so that I could compact it into one video. The first thing you're going to want to do is just take some cardboard. Uh, you can use cardstock, you can use recycled cardboard like from cereal boxes or whatever you have at hand. I'm actually using a mail envelope. This is a tough bag mailing envelope you can get at the post office here in Australia. You can probably get very similar elsewhere in the world. If not, you can use anything, any kind of card that you have. All I'm doing is measuring out my cover. So I'm going from each end and I'm measuring in how wide I want my cover to be. I made mine six inches. So I measured six inches in from each side of the cardstock. And then what was left in the middle was my spine. So that was just a really easy way for me to get my measurements, get my front and back cover the same size. And then I'm just using my paper trimmer to neaten down the edges of that cut so that everything's cut nice and neatly. And then I'm taking some heavier card. This is actually a piece of cardboard off the back of a 12 by 12 paper pad. So if you do crafting, you know, at the back of paper pads, they often have a really nice weight card to support all the paper. I always recycle this in making my covers. I find it so handy. And that's what I'm using to reinforce my cover and make the front and back a little bit thicker. So all I'm doing is cutting down two panels to sit on the front and back cover. So again, they're gonna be the same width that I measured out, which I did six inches. You can do whatever size you like and cutting them down to the same height as well. So they're gonna sit nice and flush onto that card. In the middle where my spine is, I'm not using that weight cardboard, but I am going to make it a little bit thicker by just doubling up the tough bag um, cardstock that I had. I had some left over, so I'm gonna use that and I'm gonna cut out a panel that sits on the spine and that's gonna double it up and make it thicker. So you can switch out all the materials I'm using for things you have at home, any kind of card that you want to use. You could use a thicker board for your front and back cover. You could use a thinner board. You could use fabric. You can switch this out to make it work for you. This is just what I have at home and what I'm going to be using. And I'm using some wet PVA glue. This is acid free glue, which is why I like to use this brand, but you can use any kind of wet craft glue and just glue those pieces onto your first piece of card. So I'm just making sure I apply glue nice and thick all the way to the edges. And that is how they're all becoming attached to be one cover piece. Use your bone folder to make sure everything's glued down really well and try and sort of smooth out any wrinkles that might be there. So now you can see I've got a little cover starting to take shape and I'm taking some fabric I'm using this fabric because it's nice and thin and I'm just going to use this to reinforce the spine again on the inside. So I'm going to glue a strip of fabric over the top, but this time it's going to overlay the front and back cover as well and just help join those pieces all together especially because when you're making a cover and you're using a cover it's got to open in and out over and over again so by putting fabric where the fold of the spine is it just helps to really reinforce everything fabrics obviously very flexible if you use a woven fabric it's going to really add to the structure of the spine and it's just going to help keep everything together a little bit better so i used a generous amount of glue to glue that down pressed it all down with my bone folder and then i just trimmed off the excess on the top and bottom and it doesn't matter that this piece wasn't cut straight either because it's all going to get covered up later Next, we're going to take some paper or you could use fabric if you wanted to and we're going to use that to cover the outside of the journal. So I'm actually using some wrapping paper. I just had this on hand again. I'm not really worried what it looks like. This is just the structure of the book. And so I'm just going to apply again a generous amount of glue on the outside of the cover and I'm going to glue that wrapping paper down in one big strip over the outside of the cover. Just make sure when you trim it down, you leave a border all around the book to fold over the edges later and cut off the corners so that it can easily fold, just like you're covering a schoolwork book or something like that. So I cut off my corners and then I'm applying some more glue, wrapping those sides up with the wrapping paper or the paper bag or whatever paper you're using to cover it. 
and that's just gonna again hold everything together and it's also going to make the edges of our cover more seamless and have no sort of cracks or anything where anything can come away and again I'm always using my bone folder to press everything down really well and make sure that everything's stuck down and it's not gonna lift up or have any uh, bubbles that are gonna affect the use of the book You can also at this point warp your book if you need to, if it started to bend out of shape, you can reshape it, you can shape the spine a little bit just by flexing it around before it dries. And then you want to leave that to dry and once it is quite dry, we're going to add a layer of texture to our front cover. So you can see I've got some random bits and pieces here that I'm going to glue onto the front cover. So I'm actually using some sandpaper, which gives a really cool texture. I've got some scraps of paper, I've got some paper bags, I've got pieces of fabric, and I'm just gluing these on sort of willy-nilly all over the front cover in random little patches. And the reason that I'm doing that is just to give it some more interest and some more bits of texture. So this looks quite bad at the moment, but, but again, during this step, it's not about what it looks like. We're adding a layer of texture and nothing else. So if you can ignore what everything looks like at this point, it's going to get covered up later. Just think of this step as a layer of texture. So I've cut things quite messily and I've torn things up and I've scrunched things up and I'm just trying to add as much different interesting texture as I can to the cover and again not worrying about what it looks like because we're going to paint over this in just a moment. So let that dry completely before you move on to the next step, which is to take some paint and paint our first layer. I'm using black and this is just acrylic paint. I like to use black because I'm going to use a crackle medium later. And I really like to use black as the first layer because when, it, when the black sort of cracks through your top layer of paint, um, it looks really effective. It looks like quite distressed and authentically vintage. So that's why I like to do black. It's also a really good base to cover up all of those, those patterns that are down in the first layer. So once that's touch dry and taking some crackle medium, you can use any crackle medium that you have. I think you can even make your own with like uh, craft glue or something. But I'm brushing the crackle medium over the entire cover and allowing that to touch dry again. And then when that's dry, I'm mixing up my, my second color. I wanted my book to be brown, so the colors aren't that different, but you can do any kind of color that you want. And then I'm just brushing that all over the cover again and on top of that crackle medium. And what happens is as it dries, some cracks begin to show and you get the black or whatever paint you used first starting to crack or show through your top layer of paint. So once that's dry, I'm also taking black paint. I'm going to paint around the outside of the inside cover. So around sort of the border where the wrapping paper is and also down the spine. I'm just trying to cover up all of those patterns because they're very clashy. They are going to get covered up a bit more later with papers and things, but I just like to sort of give my mind something easy to look at and so that I can decide how I'm going to decorate it later. And you can see our cover is starting to take shape. You can see the textures and the crackling starting to show through. Now we're going to cut a window in our front cover and this is an image that comes with all the nameless files that I have on Etsy, just a vintage linen that is a part of the ephemera pack and that's what I'm going to use to peek through my window so I'm just using that to measure out how large I want my window to be and then I'm just using my ruler and a pencil to mark out where the window is and then my craft or utility knife to cut out the window. So. 
I made mine a long rectangle. You can make yours any size or shape you want. You can do a square, you can do a triangle, you can do a circle, you can do whatever you like. And you don't have to use the same image I'm going to use peeking through the cover. You can if you want to, but you don't have to. You can have whatever you want peeking through the cover. Have a little think about what you might want peeking through and then sort of decide what size window you need for that image. Or if you don't know, just cut out a window and then later you can find something that fits. So there is my little rectangular window and you can see my image is going to fit quite nicely in there. So now I'm going to take some texture paste and I'm going to apply a little bit more texture to the front cover. So I'm just doing that with a paintbrush and I'm just brushing texture paste all over quite randomly. I'm focusing on the edges around the frame, like the window frame. And again, just think of this as another layer of texture. We're going to add more paint over this so you're not going to see all the white, but I just want to add more texture. I want everything to look quite distressed, so I want everything to look really imperfect. So once I was happy with how that was looking, I also took out a stencil and I'm going to use that stencil with texture paste again. And I'm not going to apply this all over the cover, I'm just going to apply it in a few areas, so around the edges, just kind of randomly. And I'm, I'm when I'm brushing on the texture paste, I'm not having perfect edges, I'm making it look kind of, I, I want it, to, I want that pattern to sort of fade out where the texture paste ends. I don't want it to have a really harsh end. So I'm adding that on the front and back cover in random places and I'm just focusing on, yeah, the front and back cover, not so much the spine. I think a little bit gets on the spine, but not too much. And then you can see that just adds some more interesting textures, some more interesting shapes. And once this is dry, we're going to paint another layer of paint over this so that you can't see all of the white, of course. Like I said, now it's time to paint again. And again, I'm adding another layer of brown paint. This is a slightly different color to the other brown and there's a reason for that and that's just that I want to add as many different layers as I can. When I'm painting I'm not covering up everything completely so I am leaving little patches where the other layers of paint are showing through and that just adds to the distressed feel and the distressed nature of this um, journal style. So yeah, you may be wondering why have I painted this cover three times, why am I covering up everything I've just done? It's just adding more and more layers and if you paint in a way that allows the other layers to show through, it's really quite effective. Now it's time to start working on the inside of the cover once it's dry. So I'm using some scrapbook paper to cover the inside of my journal, but you can use whatever you have. It doesn't have to be scrapbook paper. Really, I urge you to use what you already have at home. Um, I'm using scrapbook paper because I have it. And I'm just using a pencil to mark out where I need to cut this. I'm using a paper trimmer again because I have one, but if you don't have one, you can use scissors or you can use a ruler to mark out where to cut. And I'm just cutting these down to fit on the front and back cover. And then again, I'm taking my craft glue or wet PVA glue and applying a pretty generous amount on the inside cover to glue on the uh, lining paper and just make sure that you you apply the glue all the way to the edges and just smooth it down and try and press out any wrinkles. Same thing for the front cover of course we've got a window that we've got to avoid but just make sure that you get the glue all the way to the edges and all the way to the edges of the window that you've cut. I 
I'm going to take some lace. You can use fabric or you can use paper. I'm going to use lace to again add another layer on top of the inner spine. I like to use lace because I think it looks pretty. We are going to have our signatures in here so you're not going to see it that much but I like the way that the lace sort of um, sits over the lining paper on the inside cover and it also adds a bit more structure and strength to the spine as well. I'm using two pieces of lace to do this just because I didn't have one that was wide enough to cover over. So I've just layered them over in the middle and then I'm applying more glue on top of that and allowing it to dry completely before moving on to the next step. Trim off any excess lace or whatever you've used over the spine if you've decided to stick something on there. And now it's time to trim out the piece of paper that's in our window. So whatever shape you've cut out, it's easiest just to stick down the lining paper on the inside and then once it's dry to cut it out again. Because you've already got your guide from the front cover, you can use that with your craft knife or utility knife just to recut uh, that window and that will easily pop out the piece of paper that's now covering it. And then you have your window again. So that is how the book is looking at the moment. You can see all those layers of paint, the inside's looking nice and flush. And now we're going to take our grommets or eyelets and apply them to the spine. This is actually what we're going to be using later to bind our book. So it's going to be a no sew method. You can sew if you want to, but I just thought I'd show a really easy way to put signatures in without sewing. And so you're going to apply two grommets at either end of the spine. I'm just eyeballing where I'm putting these. I'm just trying to line them up by using my eye, but you can measure it out if you want to. And I'm just putting them on the edges of the book. So there you have it. You've got your grommets in, and that is where our signatures are going to sort of attach later, which I'll be sharing in another video. Now to really transform this, I like to take some, some gilding wax, I like to use gold, and I like to brush this all over the texture on the cover. So anywhere there's texture paste or patterns that are raised, I like to just brush this over with my finger and it really just highlights all the little raised bits and brings out the patterns and just brings out that texture. It just helps to enhance everything, it really highlights all the raised bits on the cover and it just makes it look even more distressed. I find that this step is really transformative so when you get to the end and you've got your cover and you think you're finished, if you go ahead and add some wax over the top, I feel like it makes such a huge difference. If you don't have this wax or you don't have a wax that you can use, you can also use uh, like a, a metallic stamp pad carefully, you could brush it on with a sponge. Or you could do the same thing with like a gold acrylic paint or any color that you want to use really. I also like to take the wax and apply it all over the edges of my spine and inside the window there just to highlight the edge of that window as well as on the inside cover where the lining paper meets the cover just to make everything look a little bit more seamless. Now would be the perfect time to take some varnish and to seal the cover. I actually forgot to include this in the lesson, but my favorite varnish to use is a satin varnish by Liquitex. I really like that one because it's not too glossy, but it's also not completely matte. So it adds a really nice sheen over the cover and that's just gonna help keep everything protected. It's gonna lock in all those layers keep everything looking nice for as long as possible. So that is the first lesson on how to make the cover. If you decide to join in and you do make your cover, I'd really love to see what you come up with. So make sure you use that hashtag nameless art journal. I'll be checking on Instagram to see if anyone's used the hashtag and I'm really excited to see what you guys come up with. I hope to see you here next week where we begin to make the pages for our journal.